Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, so I was uh, just browsing YouTube for neat math problems and um, I checked out math, Maths, Maths 505's channel and uh, I came across this differential equation. So just for fun, I, tr I went ahead and solved it and you know, I, I got a solution. Um, and then I, I went and watched his video and he got a completely different solution. I mean, like a totally different general form of the solution. And they both check out. They both work. They both satisfy this. So I'll link to his video uh, in the description of mine so you can check out his solution. Uh, but I'm looking for maybe some comments on how we could unify the two solutions because I mean they they are they're both definitely valid. Um, they both satisfy this equation right there. Um, all right, so let's get started. This this is my solution. Um, first, the obvious solution is that y is equal to c. If y is equal to c, y prime equals zero, y double prime equals zero, we get zero plus zero is equal to zero. So that's, that's the obvious solution. Okay. So now, um, what can we do from here? Well, our, pa our, our paths to solving this diverge almost immediately. Uh, my first step is uh, is different than his. His his first step, I believe, was to set u equal to y prime and then go from there, which is totally legit. Um, I do it a different way. I just multiply both sides by y. But first, I have to justify that. You can only multiply both sides by y as long as y is not zero, and it isn't, um, because y is equal to zero does not satisfy that differential equation. Plus, we're dividing by y, and you don't divide by zero. So, it's totally valid to multiply both sides by y. Alright. So we have y, y prime, plus y double prime, is equal to zero times y, which is still zero. Okay, next step. We're just going to go ahead and integrate both sides. Okay, um, this is just u du. You can see if our y is u, then du is uh, y prime. So this part, this integral of y times y prime just becomes y squared. And the integral of a derivative is just the original. In this case, our original is y prime. So this is y squared plus y prime is equal to zero plus c. So now we get our constant of integration, and I'm gonna call that constant of integration a. Okay, so now let's uh, let's just make a little note up here that we'll, we'll say that y is a function of x, and I should have done that before since I integrated this with respect to x. Uh, we, we were integrating with respect to x on all of these things. Okay. So now that we have y is equal to f of x, we can say that dy dx is equal to f prime of x, which is equal to y prime. Okay, so now I'll just, I'll plug that into here. We're going to get um, y squared doesn't change, but instead of writing y prime, I'll write plus dy dx, and that's still equal to a. All right. I made a mistake. You, you, you probably have all been pulling your hair out, um, saying, oh my gosh, you already, you already made a terrible mistake here. But uh, the mistake was I did not divide by 2. Yeah. That should be y squared divided by 2. Okay. Okay, so now what? Now uh, let's just we'll just do this step by step. We're going to multiply both sides by two. 
So y squared plus 2 dy dx is equal to 2a. Okay. Now I'm going to subtract y squared from both sides. So we get 2 dy dx equals 2a minus y squared. All right, and now I'm going to just multiply both sides of this by a negative 1. That becomes a plus. And I'm just going to say this is y squared minus 2a. All right, uh, quick recap. From here, all I did, I subtracted y squared and multiplied both sides by negative 1. Okay, well, negative 2 times an arbitrary constant is still just an arbitrary constant, right? So let's just, uh, let's just say this is plus 2a. And I'll kind of go backwards a little bit here and just put a negative there and a negative there and a negative there. And that, that's totally valid. I mean, a is an arbitrary constant, so negative a works just as well as an arbitrary constant. All right, so now from here, um, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by dx and at the same time, actually let's multiply both sides by one half dx. You know, I'm not even going to tell you what I'm going to do. Um, I'm just going to do it. Okay, so this is going to give us, um, let's see, dy over y squared plus 2a, that's dy over this, is equal to negative one-half dx. And I believe that checks out. This negative one-half comes from uh, dividing both sides by negative, or multiplying both sides by negative one-half. Um, yeah, no, that, that's, that's good. That's fine. Okay, so now the next step, again, we're just going to go ahead and take the indefinite integral on both sides, and I'll leave that negative one-half outside. All right, so what does this give us? This is, this is a, a pretty familiar form right here. Um, this is just, um, let's see, this is arctangent of y over the square root of 2a over the square root of 2a. And that's going to be equal to, let's see, negative one half x plus another arbitrary constant, which we will call b. All right, now let's just multiply both sides by the square root of 2a. So we have arctangent of y over the square root of 2a is equal to square root of 2a. And then in parentheses, uh, let's go ahead and just say, well, yeah, it's minus 1 half x plus b. All right, so far I don't believe I've made any mistakes, no. All right, now the next step, of course, is we will take tangent on both sides. So that the arctangent, uh, the tangent of an arctangent is just the argument. So we're just going to end up with y over the square root of 2a is equal to the tangent of 
square root of 2a. And then I'm going to write this as b minus 1 half x. No particular reason why I switched them. I just like my positives first. All right, so we took the tangent. So we just end up with this and then tangent of this. All right, great. So now, now we're, we're almost done. Now we have y is equal to um, square root of 2a um, times, times the tangent of the square root of 2a times b minus 1 half x. And then um, square root of 2a, still, that's still just an arbitrary constant. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll just say that um, we'll, we'll just call square root of 2a equal to c. We'll just call that c. All right. So all in all, what we have now, this is our final, this is, this is the final form. Uh, y is equal to c tangent c times b minus one half x. And that, this, this checks out for all real values of c and b. Uh, plug it into a graphing calculator yourself and, and check it out. Um, this, this definitely works um, in conjunction with y is equal to c. Um, so this is my solution. And it is completely, as, as far as I can see, it's completely different than his. But his also works. Um, and I'm looking for uh, some comments that might shed light on how to unify the two um, solutions. Or if there's no way to do it, we just have to include them both. Um, his solution was uh, a function of a function x that's in terms of y. Uh, mine is a function y in terms of x. But uh, go ahead and check out his video too, and leave a comment um, on your thoughts. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoyed that.